Hi again, everybody. It's your old pal, the history nerd. I am back in the man cave. And in this video, we are going to unbox, examine, and review the Stetson Stratoliner straw hat that a little man in a big brown delivery truck tossed casually upon my doorstep today. But first, as you have come to expect from the history nerd, I'm going to give you the history, a brief history, not only of the Stetson Stratoliner hat, but also of the airplane for which it is named. So let's waste no more time and get started. Uh, in 1940, Boeing brought its 307 Stratoliner online and it began flying routes from New York to Los Angeles and back for various airlines. It was the first commercial passenger transport aircraft that could fly at an altitude of 20,000 feet, higher than rough weather and where the air is smooth and it changed aviation forever. Its round fuselage had room for five crew members and 33 passengers. And its 12 foot wide cabin even had enough room for passenger berths with bunk beds in them. So passengers who flew from New York to Los Angeles at the time, which was a long overnight flight, they could book a bedroom, go to sleep in a bunk bed, and wake up well on their way to their destination. Uh, the large cabin had ample room for comfortable passenger seats, and passengers who booked flights were even given full multi-course multi meals during their flight cross-country. Billionaire Howard Hughes liked the aircraft so much, he bought one for his own private use. And he had it customized with a master bedroom, two bathrooms, a bar area, and a large living room along with a full kitchen. He named his aircraft the Flying Penthouse. And after Hughes's death, his Stratoliner aircraft, which folks recognized was a historic aircraft, not only because it was, uh, a, a, it was an important airplane of its era, but also because it was owned by Howard Hughes, uh, it passed down through many hands until strangely, it ended up in Florida where someone converted Howard Hughes's Stratoliner airplane into a houseboat that they named the Cosmic Muffin. And musician Jimmy Buffett featured the Cosmic Muffin in his novel, Where is Joe Merchant? Uh, though few people of that era could afford to fly commercially. Commercial air, air, air travel in 1940 was mainly for business purposes, not pleasure, unless you were very, very rich. And it was mainly um, it was mainly business executives who flew. Well, the John B. Stetson Company recognized um, that uh, the folks who were going to fly the Stratoliner were their customers. They were the kinds of people who bought a crap ton of fedoras and business hats. By the way, if you're familiar with the metric system, you know that four buttloads equals a crap ton and two crap tons equals one asshole. So a crap ton of, of people who flew the Stratoliner bought Stetson hats. In addition, even though a few people could afford to fly on the Stratoliner, its release was a huge media event and generated a ton of public excitement. And Stetson saw an opportunity to jump on that PR wave and ride it for a while. So uh, what they did, they took a fedora hat that they had made for 40 years and they rebranded it. 
they simply changed the name of the hat to the Stetson Stratoliner. And then they entered into a partnership with TWA Airlines. It was a cross promotion where Stetson said, hey, TWA, we will promote your airline in our advertising for our Stratoliner hat if you will promote our hat in your advertising for your Stratoliner flights. And Boeing agreed. So Stetson took out full page ads in magazines like Saturday Evening Post and Collier's. And basically the ad said, uh, if you were a man of adventure, if you were a successful guy, if you're a guy who wants to be attractive to women, uh, not only should you fly TWA Stratoliner route from Los Angeles to New York, you should buy a Stratoliner hat to wear uh, not only during your flight, but during your business purposes as well. Uh, Stetson took the unprecedented move in 1940 of spending 100% of its advertising budget promoting one hat, the Stetson Stratoliner. They even developed a special hat box for the Stratoliner that looked like it was made of aluminum, like the fuselage of the Stratoliner aircraft. And, uh, and, and, and it had what looked to be a travel sticker uh, stuck on the side of the hat box. Um, it worked, folks. It generated a lot of excitement. And in 1940, fully 25% of Stetson's total hat sales were Stratoliner hats. Now, the hat at that time cost $6.50. And you may think, well, that sounds like a cheap hat. I thought they were marketing it to business types. Well, $6.50 in 1940 is about $129 today. So it was not a cheap hat for that time. Uh, the Stratoliner has been made ever since. They never stopped making the Stratoliner. And even today, it is one of the best-selling hats that Stetson makes. Um, of course, the Stratoliner I've been talking about this whole time is the fur felt Stratoliner. And the basic fur felt Stratoliner today cost $195. They also make a hemp version of the hat, a lightweight hemp version of the hat for spring and summer wear that is $155. And they make the basic straw hat, which is the one I purchased today, which cost $95. Now, the Stetson Stratoliner straw hat does not come in a box. It does not come in a hat box. I purchased my hat from Delmonico Hatter in New Haven, Connecticut. I paid an extra $10 for a hat box uh, so I would have a place to store it. And just to make the video easier, I went ahead and cut off the shipping box that the hat arrived in so you wouldn't see me sawing on cardboard for five minutes trying to get one box out of another. So let's go ahead and open the Stratoliner and take a look at it. Uh, all right, inside we have some tissue. We have our thank you for your order, here's how to return, uh, and my packing slip. And then we have our Stetson Stratoliner hat. Um, this hat is made from Milan straw. Milan is spelled like Milan, Italy, M-I-L-A-N, but it is pronounced Milan. Um, and Milan straw is, uh, back in the old days, Milan straw was made from wheat straw. And what they would do is they would take wheat straw and they would braid it into ropes, long ropes. And then they would take those ropes and they would coil them around and sew them together until they had sewn the ropes into a hat. Now that was then. Today, Mylan straw is not made from wheat straw. It's made from synthetic man-made material 
that is also braided into ropes and sewn together in a hat. The reason they use synthetic material today, there's two reasons. First of all, uh, you get a much more uniform braid because you don't have loose fibers sticking out and wheat straw is not uniform. They're not all the same. With synthetic straw, you know they're all the same length, the same width, and you get a much more uniform braid. The other reason they use synthetic straw today is you can make hats of different colors more easily than with natural myelin straw. Uh, the Stetson Strata Liner comes in, I believe, a white color, a beige color, a gray color, and this brown color, which is called cognac. Um, and, I, and I will tell you, the reason I selected the hat in this color is you will see that it has a bound brim. It has a ribbon that runs around the brim of the hat. In the white, beige, and gray versions of this hat, the uh, ribbon on the bound brim is the same color as the straw in the hat. So it all kind of just blends together. I like the offset color. I like the fact that this ribbon pops compared to the color of the hat. So that's why I bought this color hat, which is called Cognac. Now, as far as the dimensions of this hat, uh, the Stetson Stratoliner has a four and a half inch crown. It has a two and a half inch brim. As I said, it's a bound brim. Uh, it's got a grow grain ribbon hat band that is, uh, that is used on many Western hats that, that Stetson makes, including the Open Road. This is the Grow Grain Western Ribbon. And it has a cool hat pin on it that looks like a Stratoliner aircraft. And it even has the red marking so it looks like a TWA Stratoliner aircraft, which harkens back to the history between Stetson and TWA. Um, so we'll flip it over and look on the inside. Uh, the hat has a cowhide leather band. Uh, this side of the band has the Stetson logo and says uh, Stetson Stratoliner with a picture of a Stratoliner aircraft. Uh, the front of it says Florentine Mylan um, straw. Uh, and it's got a logo, Stetson logo, uh, on the top of the crown. Uh, so that's our brand new Stetson Stratoliner hat. What I thought would be fun and also informative for y'all is if I got my straw open road, my 10X open road straw hat, and we looked at some of the differences between the open road straw and the Stratoliner straw. This may help some of you who are trying to, to decide which one to buy. This may help you make your decisions. So uh, the difference is uh, obviously the creases. This has a teardrop crease. The Stratoliner has a teardrop crease. The open road has a cattleman's crease. Uh, the crown on the open road is four inches tall versus four and a half inches. The uh, brim is two and three quarter inches versus two and a half inches on the Stratoliner. So basically on the open road, you get a shorter crown and a wider brim versus a taller crown and a narrower brim on the Stratoliner. Uh, they both have the grow grain Western ribbons, uh, but the major difference between these two is how they're made and what they're made from. The open road is made from Shantung straw. And if you've seen the other videos on my channel, you know that Shantung straw is basically compressed paper. They take paper, they compress it so it sticks together, they cut it into strips, and they weave those strips into a hat, um, which is then shellac, so it's got a protective coating on it. So this is a woven hat where the, where the hat is made by weaving straw. This is a braided hat. As I said, they take the myelin straw, braid it into ropes, and then they sew those ropes into 
the hat. So the open road is a stiff hat. Um, uh, it is a hard hat. It's got this. It's got the shellac on it um, because again, it's paper. So with the shellac, it offers some coating. So if you wear it in a drizzle or something, you're okay. Um, so this is a hard hat versus the Stratoliner, which is not. You can compress it pretty easily. Um, uh, so that's the major differences between the Open Road and the Stratoliner. I love my Open Road straw hat, and I just got this Stratoliner, but I have a feeling that I will like it very much. Now, I am about to try on the Stratoliner for you. I just got this today, uh, so I've never worn it. And as I have noted before, I cannot see what I look like in my video setup here. I won't see what I look like until I edit this video. So uh, you will see what I look like well before I see what I look like. So if I look like a plue perfect moron idiot with this hat on, you will know before I do. The other thing I want to tell you about this hat is uh, everything I've read about it says it runs large and to order a size smaller than you usually wear. I wear a seven and three quarters hat because I have a giant melon for a head. Uh, the place where I ordered this hat, Delmonico Hatter, did not have this color in any size other than seven and three quarters. So I could not order a seven and five eighths. So we are going to see now if this hat runs large like many of the reviews have said. So let me put it on. And I can attest that yes, this hat does run large. I don't know if it's a full size large but it is a little large. I can wear this hat like this, but it is looser than it should be. Uh, but for those of you who are new to hats, you can order hat sizers, which are these adhesive foam strips that you can peel off and you can put in the front of your hat and the back of your hat. Sometimes you may need one in both if the hat's way too large. Uh, you, you, you just put them underneath the hat band, put the hat band over them, and that sizes your hat down. You can stack them sometimes if you need to, if the hat's really too big. Um, so I am obviously going to need a hat sizer or two in this hat. Um, the other thing I'll note is I have seen some people will go to Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot and buy the adhesive uh, weather strips, foam weather strips that people put in their doors and around their windows to keep drafts out. Some people buy those, take off the adhesive and actually put them all the way around the hat underneath the hat band and use those for hat sizers. So that's an idea for you. Um, so uh, I'm going to need to put a hat sizer in here, but, uh, but uh, the hat uh, doesn't feel too terribly big. Another difference between the Stratoliner and the Open Road, the Open Road has a stiff brim that you have to steam in order to reshape. And because this is a fedora, it has a snap brim. So if you want to wear the brim down, you just snap it down or if you want to wear the brim up, you just snap it up. Uh, so there you go, folks. Uh, that's the history of the Boeing 307 Stratoliner aircraft, the history of the Stetson Stratoliner hat, the difference between the Stratoliner and the open road, uh, how to use hat sizers, folks. This video has been chock full of information. Your brains are probably hurting for all of the information that I have shoved into your brain during this brief video. Um, but let me say, if you liked this video and the other videos on my channel, I need to ask you to do three things for me. 
please give me the Fonzie thumbs up. Hey, uh, hit uh, subscribe and then ring the bell. So the next time I fire up the old YouTube gizmo, you will be the first to know. Uh, I'm going to close this video like I close all of my videos. Uh, for those of you who are sus subscribers or longtime watchers of this channel, you should know this by heart, so please say it with me. My friends, I ask all of you to be well, be happy, be good, and goodbye, friends. I am going to see you very soon.